two new launch condo very near to each other and they are going to launch around the same time in April Hello everyone, I'm the property strategist Stephen Chong. Appreciate your early thumbs up. Like today, I'm going to compare between these two projects, the Busu Grand and the Continuum. Which project is better? Which one got a better location? Which one got more upside potential? Freehold or 99? Freehold big development, is it always good? How is the rental yield in this area? And the prices in District 15 is already matching the price in some of the core central regions. Isn't it too high already? And also, which one got a better review score? In this video, I'm going to address all these questions. Tembusu Grand will comprise 638 units over the 4 towers up to 21 storey high. Tembusu Grand is located at the junction of Tanjong Katong Road and Jalan Tembusu. Tanjong Katong Road is the main road, while Jalan Tembusu is a service road, which means Jalan Tembusu will be quieter. But the developer placed the tennis court and barbecue pits at this quieter corner, instead of putting it at the more noisy corner. And why the developer purposely shifted this tower slightly to the middle? If you want to find out why, continue watching on. The continuum will comprise 816 units over 6 towers up to 18 storey high. The continuum land came from the successful collective sales of freehold landed homes along Tiam Siu Avenue. And because it was a two row of landed houses, then the new launch project will become like two land parcels split by one road in the middle. There will be a link bridge between the two plots of land, which is very unique. Lor. I never see such a bridge eh, crossing a public road and link between two plots of land for the same project. Eh. It will be the very unique landmark in Tanjong Katong. I think in the future, there will be a lot of people coming here just to check in for their Instagram. Oh yeah, when I visit the site, I saw they already demolished all the houses except this one house here. And they will preserve it as one of the future function rooms. When I walk around these two extra sites, I can see that the continuum is surrounded by the existing high-rise condo. Whereas for Tembusu Grand, although right now it may seem like nothing blocking it, but I found that is another ongoing government land sales that can build even taller condo. At the back, right now is public car park for the shop houses. But when you look at the UI master plan, it will be another future residential development. However, I still feel that the vibes around the Jalan Tembusu is still better than Tiam Siu Avenue. Maybe because the road at Jalan Tembusu is wider than Tiam Siu Avenue. And in the future, Tembusu Grand is going to be surrounded by the new and modern design condos. But tech not, you got to bear with the upcoming construction noise. Another thing is that Tembusu Grand is nearer to the landed cluster, which is part of the reason why. I feel it is having a better vibes. But if you ask me about the project itself, right, I would say that the continuum will be the future special landmark of District 15, which is their advantage over Tembusu Grand. Okay, both projects are accessible via Tanjong Katong Road and they are very near to each other, only about 650 meters away or just 8 minutes walk. Since we are talking about the location, usually the people will ask is how near to the MRT station. And I like to use Google Maps to find out. Okay, Tembusu Grand is 10 minutes walk to the upcoming Tanjong Katong MRT on the Thompson East Coast Line. This will be just 6 stops to Marina Bay MRT Interchange, whereas the Continuum is also 10 minutes walk to Dakota MRT Station on Circle Line. Also 6 MRT stop to Marina Bay. So in terms of the walking distance to the MRT station, both are the same. But is it a concern to most of the buyers that 10 minutes walk to the MRT station is quite far away? For many years, the residents in District 15 don't have any MRT stations. And the bus service here is quite convenient. Like they have direct bus to the city area. And many homeowners here in District 15 own a car, which is very convenient. Especially it is very near to ECP and Nico highway and the Thompson East Coast Line will start operation next year onwards which is before your condo even TOP. This is like icing on the cake. Mm -hmm. 
So next is the amenities around. Talking about the eateries, you will be spoiled for choices because there are a lot of famous eateries just along Tanjong Katong Road, such as Bungo Nasi Lemak, Hang Leong Teochew Porridge, Little Italy, Nan Siang Chicken Rice, Gravy Restaurant, Eng's Wantan Noodle. Talking about that, uh, I got read this article by Stack Homes. Somebody really moved from District 10 to here eh, just because of the wonton noodle. Eh. Now let's talk about the primary school. I know this could be the deal breaker if the good school is not located within the one kilometer radius. Now let's start with the continuum. Wow, not bad eh? Got three primary school within the first kilometer radius. Somehow there are the top primary school like Guanghua, Tanjong Katong Primary and Head Girls School. Next, Tembusu Grand. Also the same three primary school within the first kilometer radius. But Guanghua seems like on the boundary line already. Okay, let me double check. Eh? Wah, wow, really on the boundary? Wah, wow, hang ah. Now you know why the developer placed the tennis court at this corner instead of the corner near to the main road so that all the towers can be leaned towards the left hand side to ensure all the towers are, are within first kilometer from Guanghua School. That's why CDL is the best developer in Singapore. La. Now, if you ask freehold or 99 is a better choice, most agents will tell you that a 99 is a better choice. But is it really true? Well, there are three reasons why a 99 year lease hall is better. The first reason, the price is much cheaper as compared to the freehold condo. The second reason, your tenants don't care whether it is a freehold or a 99 year condo, they will still pay you the same rental. So that means uh, the 99 year lease hall will have a higher rental yield as compared to the freehold project. And the third reason, if you buy cheap, it will be easier for you to sell in the future. And these reasons are really valid. Eh? Except the last one, sometimes it may may not be true. Uh. If you buy cheap, doesn't mean that in the future, it is easier for you to sell as well. Uh. One thing to take note, which is the price gap between the freehold and the leasehold project. If the price gap is too big, then the leasehold is a better buy. But if the price gap is too small, then the buyers don't mind topping up a bit more just to get the freehold condo. So the question is, how much is the price gap that you should choose for a freehold or a leasehold project? Is it 20% or 30%? Okay, which one got better upside? For analysis purpose, I take the two old condo nearby to see how was their performance. One is the 99 year leasehold, another one is a freehold. To be fair, I purposely choose both projects, same age, both TOP in 2004. And the 99 year project is probably the only leasehold in the vicinity, which is Dunman View. Whereas the freehold condo for comparison, I use Butterworth 8. Since they are near to each other and both TOP in 2004, so let's look at their price trend in the last 20 years. Initially, it was launched in 2002. The freehold condo was around 100 PSF or 17% higher than the leasehold condo. Then after that TOP, the leasehold project slowly catch up until there was a point whereby both of the project price was super close to each other. For many years until this point of time in 2011, then you start to see the freehold price started to pick up higher and leave a wider price gap between the 99 and freehold. From 2004 to 2011, how many years? Seven years after TOP, then the freehold condo start to see an advantage. Until now, they are almost 20 years after TOP. They are more than 400 PSF difference, which is about 30% gap. Then you may say, no lah, this is just one of the example only, right? Maybe for other projects, different pattern eh? Okay, then I show you head court. Is it the same pattern as Butterworth? Exactly the same. And now I show you another younger freehold condo, which is TOP in 2010. Vasilia on heck. Also the same pattern. So what are the findings from this simple research? The 99 year leasehold project performed better before it turned 8 years old. And then the freehold slowly catch up and leave a wider price gap. So what is the property hunting strategy that we can apply here? 
First, if you can't afford a freehold condo, you just buy the 99-year leasehold. But make sure the price gap between the freehold and the leasehold is big enough, let's say 20%, and then you sell the 99-year leasehold after the TOP or before it turns uh, 10 years old, and then you go to buy a freehold resale condo in the future. That way, you probably can optimize the capital gain. The continuum comes with 818 units in total, will be the biggest freehold condo in District 15. It is like a combination of 10 small projects. I think you may hear from somewhere that a big freehold development can always make big profit. But is it really true? Now when we talk about the freehold property, how big is considered big development? As you can see, most of the freehold around is actually less than 200 units. I would say it is a really big project with more than 500 units. But is it the bigger the better? Ah? Or there is a certain sweet spot that we should look out for? There are less than 20 freehold developments in Singapore with more than 500 units. Only 4 of them are in District 15. But I don't want to take them as an example because 2 of them are the new launch condo whereas the other two got a C view factor, then the price can be super high and it is not accurate for comparison purpose already. So I take the biggest freehold development for this analysis purpose. And this is also the only one project that is bigger than the continuum. This is Signature Park. TOP in 1998, located in the upper Bukit Timah estate, Signature Park is a huge condo with 928 units in total. And let's see how Signature Park performed in the past 10 years. 211 profitable transactions and none of them lose money. The price trend going from 1066 PSF 10 years ago to 1605 PSF now. This is a 50% increase. One thing to show you, you see this guy bought in 2017 and sold in 2022. Back him more than 500,000 in just 5 years. So who say buying a resale condo cannot make money? Eh? But I must show you a smaller freehold development for comparison purpose, right? So I take the nearby project, Grand Chateau. I don't know whether I pronounce correctly or not, eh? but doesn't matter. Eh? TOP in 1996 with a total of 69 units only. As you can see, the price trend in 2013 were almost the same, but now the price gap is getting wider and wider. So that concludes, nowadays people are still prefer a bigger development. But the thing is, the freehold big development is very rare. So now we have the continuum, which will be the biggest freehold development in District 15 with 816 units in total, plus the interesting link bridge. I think this project is going to be a must visit landmark in Tanjong Katong. The rental yield in Headcourt is only 2.37%, which is very low in today's market. Then I also checked Amber 45, very new TOP project in 2020. But the rental yield is only 2.98%. Now I checked the newer project in District 15, Seaside Residences, also TOP in 2020. The rental yield is 3.61%, which is much higher. So what do you see from here? Headcourt. Amber 45, they are freehold developments, whereas Seaside Residences is a 99-year leasehold project. So I want to tell you that if you want to get a higher rental yield, you can forget about the freehold project ah, because the freehold project is always come with a higher price tag, but the rental is still the same as compared to the 99-year leasehold. Currently, the rental yield is still below 4%, but Thomson East Coast Line will be fully operating from 2024 onwards. I believe the rental yield will be much higher. Now, come to the score review for Tembusu Grand and the Continuum. All these are just based on my personal opinion without bias. Okay, this is the biggest concern among many buyers, which is the price in District 15 is already matching the price in some of the core central regions. Is the price in District 15 going to sustain? So how to justify the price in District 15? Okay, I take headcourt as an example because it is right next to Tembusu Grand and it is the biggest existing condo in the vicinity with 360 units in total. 
despite it being an almost 20 years old freehold project, the asking price at head court for now is around 1,900 to 2,200 PSF. Amber 45, freehold condo TOP in 2020, the asking price is now between 2,500 to 2,800 PSF. And you may say that this is just the asking price only. But in fact, they already transacted around 2,600 PSF. Amber Park, a big freehold condo going to TOP soon, sellers are asking around 2,900 PSF. Meanwhile, there are already sub sell units sold for 2,800 PSF. So how much do you think the Continuum and Tembusu Grand is going to price? According to Edge Prop Analysis, the estimated break even for Tembusu Grand is 2059 PSF by factoring a 15% profit margin to the developer. CDL would have to price at 2368 PSF on average, whereas the break even for the Continuum is 2296 PSF after 15% profit margin will be 2640 PSF. So this is only a price gap of 11% only. Eh. Seems like no brainer to go for the freehold, right? But the question is, will Hoi Hub really price it at around 2600 PSF or 2800 PSF? Okay, if you are keen to know more in depth about these two projects, you may click the link below to register. And I will share with you what is the unit type to avoid if you are buying into these two projects. Before ending this video, I'm going to share my thoughts. Both are by the renowned developers. At the moment, I still can't really judge without the full floor plan yet. You can see my rating for Tembusu Grand is slightly higher, mainly because I'm coming from the investment point of view. But most importantly, it is still subject to the price difference. So let's say their price gap is more than 20%, I will pick Tembusu Grand. If the price gap is less than 20%, then I will go for the Continuum. And if your plan is just to flip upon TOP, I will suggest you to go for Tembusu Grand. But if you are buying for your own stay long term, for example, 20 years, the Continuum will be the better choice. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you wish to engage me for property related service, you may reach me via my WhatsApp at 9188 7652. And hope to see you soon. Bye.